Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, we are going to continue our discussion on different probability distributions. This time, I'll be going over the binomial distribution. So first, let's go over what makes an experiment a binomial distribution. In order to be a distribution of this type, it must satisfy each letter of this acronym, BINS. The first letter, B, stands for binary outcomes. And what this means is that there are only two outcomes of your given event. Either a certain outcome occurs, usually called a success, or it does not occur, usually called a failure. Next, the binomial distribution must have independent trials. In other words, the success or failure of one event must not somehow affect the success or failure of any other event. Then, this distribution must also have a defined n number of trials. And finally, each trial must have the same probability of success each time. So for example, let's say you were rolling a die four times and you wanted to find the probability of rolling a one, two of those four times. Let's see if this experiment meets the requirements for a binomial distribution. So first, during each roll, you can put the outcome into one of two categories. Either you roll a one, aka a success, or you don't roll a one, aka a failure. So it satisfies the B. Next, the fact that you roll a certain number during one trial has no effect on the number you roll on the next trial, so this also satisfies the I. Then, we are rolling the die four times, so we specifically have four trials, and that satisfies the N. And finally, during each trial, we have the same probability of one-sixth for rolling a one, so that satisfies the S. And because all these conditions were met, we know this experiment will follow a binomial distribution. Now that we covered what makes something a binomial distribution, let's go over some properties of this distribution. First, the mean or expected value. For the binomial distribution, the mean, mu, is pretty simple and equals n times p, where n is the number of trials for the experiment and p is the probability of success for each trial. Next, the standard deviation is also pretty straightforward. Sigma equals the square root of n times p times 1 minus p, or you might also see it as the square root of n times p times q, where q equals 1 minus p, aka the probability of failure since there are only two outcomes for a trial. Finally, let's go over some of the more interesting stuff, probability. If you want to calculate the probability of getting x number of successes in your experiment, all you do is n choose x times p raised to x times q raised to n minus x. Uh, what? To see what the heck this means and where it comes from, Let's dissect it a bit with our previous example of rolling a die four times. As a reminder, in this experiment, we want to find the probability of rolling a one, two out of our four trials. So first, let's look at what this right side of the formula gives us. With our n equaling four trials, our probability of success equaling one-sixth, and our desired number of successes equaling two, we can write this as 1 6th squared times 5 6th raised to 4 minus 2, or 5 6th squared. If we were to expand this out, it would be 1 6th times 1 6th times 5 6th times 5 6th. But what does this mean? Well, since each of our four trials are independent, to find the probability of a certain situation occurring, we can multiply together the probabilities of the outcomes for each trial. So in this order, we would specifically be finding the probability of getting a success, aka rolling a 1 on the first roll, a success on the second roll, a failure on the third roll, and then finally a failure on the fourth roll. So essentially, this right side is a way to calculate the probability of one specific situation that satisfies our desired outcome of rolling a 1 twice. But there are other situations that satisfy this as well, right? What if we rolled a 1 on our first and third rolls? Or on our third and fourth rolls? 
or any of the other situations that result in two ones. How do we account for all those possibilities? Well, that's where this thing comes into play, which is pronounced as n choose x. Basically, what this value gives us is the total number of different ways you can write your desired outcome. In other words, out of our n trials, how many ways are there to have x successes? Or for our example, out of four rolls, how many ways are there to roll a one twice? So to calculate n choose x, you need to look at one more ugly looking formula. But just like the other one, it's not as scary as it looks. If you haven't seen them before, these exclamation points represent factorials. And all a factorial is, is taking a number and multiplying it by each integer below it until you reach one. So the factorial of three would be three times two times one, or equal to six. And if we wanted to calculate four choose two for our example, we would take four factorial and divide it by four minus two factorial times two factorial. As a result, our top would be four times three times two times one, and our bottom would be two times one times two times one. And this equals 24 over four, or six. So this means that out of our four rolls, there are six different ways to roll a one twice. Overall, in order to find the probability of a certain outcome, we take the probability of reaching that outcome in one specific way and multiply it by the total number of possible ways there are to write that desired outcome. And to see it in its full beauty, the probability of rolling two ones is equal to four choose two times one six squared times five six raised to four minus two. Using our previous calculations, this simplifies to six times one six squared times five six squared, or 0.1157. So the probability of rolling one twice in four rolls is 11.57%. And just for fun, let's also find the mean and standard deviation of this scenario. Once again, to find the mean, we multiply n times p, or for our example, 4 times 1 sixth, to get that mu equals 4 sixths. And what this means is that during your four rolls, you can expect to roll a 1 4 sixth times. And this might seem a little strange, because you can't roll a 1 4 sixth of a time. But if you were to repeat this experiment of four rolls again and again, and average the number of times you rolled a one per experiment, the value you get would approach four sixths. Next, to calculate the standard deviation, we would take the square root of n times p times one minus p, which would be the square root of four times one sixth times one minus one sixth or four times one six times five six, or equal to 0.745. Now I hope you found this video helpful in your journey to master statistics, but if you have any questions or feedback for how we can make our videos better, please let us know down in the comments. And if you did find this helpful, please tap those like and subscribe buttons to see more of our content. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams, don't let a class get in the way.